This is Justin for CGT345 and this week I'm going to show you my contribution towards my group assignment. So in my group assignment I was responsible for building the control of the actual player. So our game is a single button jumping game called Cloud Jumper and it just features a frog jumping higher and higher until it reaches the goal. When designing the game we wanted the action of jumping to be as flexible as possible. So what we decided to do was uh, add an ability for the frog to charge their jump. I implemented this by allowing the frog to jump a short distance or a long distance or anything in between. So this is the blueprint for the frog. And as you can see, it's got a whole lot of comments, but I'm going to break it down so it's going to be a lot easier to understand. So the simplest part of it is the how it reacts to the input. So we just used the third person blueprint character for this and we ripped out almost everything everything about its movement except for its jump. So the only thing we changed about this was add a boolean variable called is jump held down and we'd set that to be true or false based on if the key is being pressed or not. Secondly I swapped the jump actions so that he'd jump when the key is released and not jump when the key is pressed. And when the frog isn't jumping and the key is being held down, this boolean variable is being fed to some code uh, that updates on event tick. So every event tick, I have created a counter called jump counter. What that does is it checks that the key is being held or not. If it is, then it increments the jump counter. And if it's not, then it resets the jump counter to zero. So there was one weird thing about delta seconds and it didn't and it was that it didn't really react how we were expecting it to. So uh I decided to scale it a little by dividing it by 10, but I would have expected it to divide by a thousand considering it's in milliseconds. But um we never really got this to work as expected. Here you can see the constants for the code that will be shown next. So there's a max jump height, a max hold time, a min jump height, and a min hold time. The jump height refers to the Z velocity for the frog, and the hold time is how long their key is being held. So these constants here just show the maximum it can be and the minimum it can, it can be, because we didn't want it to be like, for example, if the player holds it down for 10 seconds and they jump up into the stratosphere, nor did we want the player to tap the space bar and barely jump at all. So this is the condition for that code. All it does is check if the jump counter is above a certain value or below a certain value and then it assigns the z velocity accordingly based on the constants, which you can see through the green wires. This is the code that we used for determining between the maximum and the minimum jump height. Um, it didn't work as well as we expected but it does it does approximate it well enough but given more time i'd have liked to perfect this so first what it does it uses the current jump counter to create a fraction with the maximum hold time now remember that if it's over the maximum hold time or the minimum hold time it would go to a different condition the only value that can go in here would be the legal values next i subtracted it by a small value just to make sure that holding it to the max and holding it to just before the max would have a bit more of a difference and then I multiplied this fraction by maximum jump so it should have the effect of proper fraction of the maximum jump that is possible and then finally it gets fed to the jump z velocity uh, variable of the third person character. Next so here is the here is the quote-unquote animation controller for uh, the frog and all that does is checks uh, checks if the character is falling or not. Now, I don't know if this is completely accurate because uh, I couldn't find the actual is grounded variable for this third person character. And because of this, the animations don't work exactly as you want them to, but they are still very passable. All this does is set the animation to a stay position if the character is not falling and set it to a jumping animation if the character is jumping. Now the problem that I mentioned earlier is that when he falls back down this, 
The sprite doesn't change from the jumping to the falling sprite. So this was the first time I'd used flipbooks. So the flipbooks are literally just a single frame flipbook with a sprite that I drew really quickly on paint.net. The one shown is the stay sprite. And as you can see, it shows the frog priming a jump. And so, yeah, that was my contribution towards my group for this week's CGT project.